clog, ladies. What's warmer in the spring, the land or the ocean? The land. Okay, and let's draw a Cape Cod. That wind blowing over the ocean waters, the air is warmer than the land, ocean. So a stratus cloud forms. Okay, and Jeff, a stratus cloud doesn't produce fog, it produces drizzle. And I think I say it on here, drizzle is not the same thing as rain. It's mist. Okay, drizzle falls from a stratus. And if Jeff was a stratus cloud, he would form when the temperature cools to the dew point. If they're both 50-50, you can't hold any more water. So you're going to condense. But actually, Mrs. Callahan, the cumulonimbus clouds I just showed you form as sun heats the ground and the warm air goes up. It's always got to go up. Remember that rising air, Mike. Mike's going to say it tonight in his bed. Rising air is low pressure. Okay, when the air rises, it's going to cool due to expansion. Remember, when we take our imaginary trip in just a little bit, Jeff, yeah. okay, when we go on an aircraft, Jeff goes, what's that? You know, that woman's saying I could pass up. Jeff goes, I don't want to pass up. I just want to get out of New England. All right. Uh, actually, the air pressure decreases with height. We've probably already gone through this, but that causes the sun to heat the ground and the warm air cools because expansion is caused by everyone by ladies by the air pressure decreasing with height. So actually, you can read this, and we talk about stability, okay? And something I do at the schools that's really funny, would be well, funny, but we get a point across, is that if Mike's the ocean, people say, Mrs. Callahan maybe has a friend out in Ringe or the hilly terrain, the Manhattan region, they go, Mrs. Callahan, do you do this in your weather class? They always get big thunderstorms there. And then when they go to her friend at Portsmouth, they always die out. But her friend that lives in, uh, say, Wilton or Swansea, why are the thunderstorms larger there? Well, what is a stable atmosphere? Warm air over cool air, right? And that's a stable atmosphere, okay? However, the atmosphere can also be, your name is? Kate. Kate. Not stable then? Unstable. Take her back, she can watch me do the one. Unstable! And Kate wants to know, right? Is it Katie? Yeah. Why is that unstable, Katie? Because cold air or cool air likes to be what in relation to warm air? Below. Likes to be below. Thank you, Shauna. Very good. This is unstable. And if it's unstable, clouds are going to form. How many have been to Hampton Beach in the summer? It's Tom, I think, and Katie, I asked. This is Mrs. Callahan's looking. She sees, there's the ocean. It's all blue. But you look back over McDonald's towards Derry, it's all cloudy. And that's because Mike, the ocean, is stabilizing the air. So if Mike's the ocean, actually, I did this at Lund Derry Junior High, Katie, with the eighth grade. I actually went like this. <coughs> I was actually choking, and I may believe I just, not faint, but I'm like, as your student thought, I was really, you know, that was happening. A thunderstorm will die with the sea breeze. Why we don't get a lot of big thunderstorms near the coast in the spring and early summer is that if I'm a thunderstorm and I'm going near Mike the ocean, Mike's going to tell all his friends, how's the ocean? Okay, I'm dying because I'm going into stable air. Thunderstorms like unstable air. Why if Mike goes to Florida in July, you better get to the beach at 8 o'clock in the morning. He sleeps till noon. He's going to have a thunderstorm. Maybe. He does scattered. But when you go to Florida in the summer, you set that alarm clock not late, but early. early. All right, Jeff. Jeff knows he's out of bed at 5 in the morning. Because the sun heats the ground and we get the convective clouds to fall. And convection is the development of the cumulonimbus cloud. Okay? When the sun heats the ground, even in Florida, Mrs. Callahan, it's unstable. Okay, let's go to page four. Lifted index. How unstable is it? Mike wants to know, and Katie over there. If the lifted index that we get by our computer models is minus six or less than or equal to, you can get severe thunderstorms. And you can get tornadoes forming or funnels. If the lifted index, your name is? Amy. Amy is positive, then the atmosphere is more stable. Okay, and the ocean does affect the weather here. Okay, Mike's having a blast in his pool, and he's got a sunburn, and Mike's over at the coast 
didn't get a burn, he's frustrated. The fog came in 10 minutes after he got there, and he came home frustrated. People go, look at this fog, he at the beach. I got the chamber president always bugging me every summer. The fog man could sit there for two hours, Kate, uh, Shada. <laughs> That's the trickiest part of the summer forecast. How long will the fog man be there? And Mrs. Callahan, when you have high pressure over New England, like tomorrow, that allows the sea breeze to fall. <laughs> Because Jeff knows, and Katie and all of you, that winds are caused by differences in air pressure. And you surely do have it when you have light winds over the interior. Because if Katie was high pressure, and you were low, Tom, okay, when you're over an area, you're going to have light winds. And that will allow Mike the sea breeze to fall. And when you got to the beach, Mike says, there's the fog bank by the Isle of Shoals. Look out there, Mike. It's going to come in, Mike because the sea breeze brought the fog in. And it could sit there for a couple of hours. Meanwhile, if you go downtown, people are at the uh, ice cream shop in downtown Hampton, the sun may be out brightly. Or very, very, it's out pretty good. Has anyone ever seen that happen before? Where it's sunny in downtown Hampton? She's agreeing, yeah? All right. Now, if wind is caused by differences in air pressure, your name was, I'm sorry, I'm trying to remember. <laughs> Amy. What are fronts caused by? Differences in... What? Air pressure. Right, Mike. <laughs> Watch out, Tom. You're going to be joining at Linden in the fall. Cold fronts normally move from west to east. Right? But in the summertime, they can sometimes come down from Maine. And Tom knows he's going to learn in Intro to Meteorology that's a backdoor cold front. It's coming from the back door. And Tom, that's caused by the differences between what? The cool ocean and the warmer <coughs> land. Okay, Shauna. And the fronts are caused, like wind, by differences in air pressure. We'll see that coming up. The dew point can be real hot. Okay, how many have been to Louisiana in the summer? No, no one? Florida. Who's been to Florida, Florida in the summer? Yeah. Mike goes. Real humid, right? I'm going to Well, Plum, Plum Island and all. Plum Island, Island. okay. Florida, the dew point can be how high? The dew point can go up to as high as 70 to, we've seen an 80 degree dew point. Now, don't get confused with relative humidity. Relative humidity is a more accurate, uh, dew point is more accurate than relative humidity. You're sweating in the summer. She's uh, outside with the flowers. After the sun goes down, the relative humidity goes up. Whereas the dew point, is a more accurate level of discomfort. The winter can go below zero. Then Jeff got a shock when he touched the switch. Okay? Now in the summer, you get sweat to death. Okay? In fact, your shirt could be as wet as a sponge, Mike. Mike, Mike Louisiana, it's 90 degrees. And the dew point's 73. Mike goes, I like Canada at all of you. We sweat down here too much. I have central air. But just to go outside. Maybe Jeff wants to play basketball and Katie, the two of them. He can't play. We'll smell here. We'll sweat. We're going back to Canada where we can play basketball and so that that's that's pretty humid. So Katie and Jeff goes, this place is lousy. Okay, for Florida, you really can't even between thunderstorms, it's that very, very very moist air. If Mrs. Callahan likes to use a dryer in the summer, she can't down there because the air is very moist. The clothes won't dry. Even near the coast here, a lot, a lot of people have to have dryers. Sometimes your clothes shrink in a dryer, but you've got to grin and bear. Page five. Um, oh, one last thing. Can we go to page four? Some of you have gone to Hampton Beach, and we're going to use Mike again as an example. Mike went on July 25th in the water temperature. They take it twice a day at Hampton, the lifeguards. In the morning, it was 65. In the afternoon, it was 65. The next morning, it was 56. It dropped 9 degrees. And Mike didn't know that, but when he went to the beach, his felt like his toe was going to come off. Mike goes, ow! What is freezing? I hate this beach! It's not just Hampton, it's all of them. How did the water drop? The wind. We had high pressure and low, right in between. Uh, my friend in London there, he does karate. I mean, he's not getting, don't worry. All right, one of the students there. All right, in between.
Typically, we have a lot of wind. wind. So if you're in between high and low pressure, okay, the isobars, Jeff and everyone, are going to be very close. And that won't allow what to form? The sea. Breeze. The breeze won't form. Very good, Sean. A sea breeze likes to form when the winds are light over the land, Mrs. Callahan. And a strong northwest wind in the summer will prevent the sea breeze from forming. So the temperatures from the coast to the inland will be more isothermal, Mike. So when Mike went back the next day, it felt like his toe was going to come off. His feet were freezing. It felt like he couldn't feel his knee because he went all the way in and he almost he came right out of it. He goes, I'm going to go to Mike's swimming pool. Because you don't have that as much in a swimming pool. This is called coastal upwelling. What happens? The warm water at the surface. Here's the land. There's the ocean. The wind's coming from. It's hitting me in the back, Jeff. There's McDonald's at my back. The wind's coming that way. Okay, if I sat on the raft, Mrs. Callahan, I'd be carried out to sea. When I was younger, we used to go to the south side of the cave. Don't take a raft out, Ron! There goes Ron out in the ocean, because the wind will actually take you out. All right? So actually, coastal upwelling, Mrs. Callahan, can lower the water temperature that much if the wind is strong enough. And that hinges on how strong you two are. Remember the cool summer we had a couple of years ago this set. So you can read more of that. Page five. Tom, we're going to go right to the second here. Talks about fronts. Thunderstorm is ahead of the cold front. Okay, if Kate was the warm air, or she's the high pressure, okay, there's going to be a front stretching from Tom. He's the low. Where you are is the warm air. Okay, the cold air lifts the warm air up like a wedge, Mike. This is actually happening. And thunderstorms can form ahead of the cold front. How much sun we get, Jeff and Amy, determines how strong they are. If you get a lot of heating ahead of the cold front, the atmosphere will be more unstable. Okay, remember, minus six or lower, a plus lifted index means stable. Plus one or up. And you can read this, some information on your fronts here. A stationary front will bring bad weather. Now, in Florida, it's not too good. Mrs. Callahan was there now. She said, oh, not another day away. <laughs> when I go to Florida, there ain't no Okay. Lunch, fronts I'm sometimes stop. Okay. Uh, and we're going to talk quickly about where Lyndon's going on the field trip. I want to save that for about 11.05, quickly, when I show you what's in this box. Quickly, though, Ron, fronts can still make it this time of year into North Florida, and they become stationary. They run out of gas. And if you were cold air, and he was, uh, you were low pressure, and she's sinking air, okay, when you interact, why don't you two shake hands? Okay, how do you interact? Okay, uh, well, when you interact, that's what brings storms. And that's what can cause fronts, differences in air pressure. Okay, and when you two are colliding with a front, fronts bring bad weather. And frontogenesis, Mike, is the formation of a front. Frontolysis is when it breaks up. An occluded front, Mrs. Callahan, is when the cold front catches up to the warm front. And you can draw three types of fronts here. Occluded, warm students, and cold. And the, where the three fronts meet, Tom will learn at Linden, is called the triple point. And the triple point sometimes can form a storm. Okay? Might sometimes fronts, a stalled front can bring bad weather in the winter. Say it's through Boston. The upper level winds are blowing west to east. At the surface, they're off the ocean, Mrs. Callahan. Convergence can produce a very isolated area of heavy snow. Two different wind directions. Aloft and Amy at the surface. They're going to meet. It's just like Mike got the winning basket. Everyone's hugging Mike. They got a, the whole school hugged Mike. He got the winning basket for Timberland. You won the finals. What do you do when you all jump on Mike? Katie's jumping on. I love you, Mike. You're converging. Air converges like we do. Okay? Mike must have said, what are you doing? I can't do it any other way without making it boring. Convergence is when air comes to together. together. Right, Amy? And it has to go up. 
And that's, Mrs. Callahan, what we call the intertropical convergence zone, ITCZ. And when that goes north of the equator, what season starts? What do we call it every year, June 1st? Amy, what season? Okay. Yeah, but say it. I knew Ron knew it. Hurricane season. Uh, and after November 30th, the zone goes below the equator. And then hurricane season goes to the southern hemisphere now. But it's going to start moving north again. The intertropical convergence. Page seven, quickly. We've got ten minutes. Hurricanes. You can read this on your own. Katie and Amy know it, all the men here, that friction lowers the wind speed. Mrs. Callahan and I will land, and you are the ocean, and Rock, Jeff is the uh, hurricane. Hurricane's going to die over us because we, uh, we're like a friction, we're a force. And in physics, you probably learned, students, that friction lowers the wind speed. Plus, hurricanes like the water vapor, your name, I'm Stacy. Stacy. The water vapor is a fuel for a hurricane over the warm ocean. And a hurricane can never form at Hampton Beach. And we actually, Stacy, don't get really hit by a hurricane because Hampton Beach faces not south, but east. east. Hurricanes come up from the south, so you really don't get a direct hit. It's going to hit coastal Connecticut, Rhode Island, and then they start to weaken. Thank you, All right, Sean, help me out there. Good come, good come back there. Okay, and they're categorized as tropical storms. So Shauna could be a tropical storm. If they send a plane in, her winds are over 74, or 74, we call that a hurricane. Okay, jet stream, quickly. You can read it at the top. Okay, there you go. Mike's looking. There he is, all right. It, I define what it is. There are three jet streams in the winter. The main two that you see on the map, Mrs. Callahan, last night that we had was the polar and the subtropical. In the winter summer, we just have the polar, and the jet stream blows faster in the summer because the differences in air pressure are not less, but what in the winter? They blow faster in the winter. Why? Amy, because the differences in air pressure in the winter are gr great. Great. They're right for the end. Right. Al, why do they change their positions? Why are the jet streams located? We have no exact answers why it changed the position, but Actually, if you look quickly on page 9, uh, we talk about vorticity. The more the jet stream bends, Mike, you notice the top diagram, the trough is in the west, the ridge is in the east. That was the jet stream two winters ago, Mrs. Callahan, the summer of 95. Quickly, I'm going to answer a question on the last page. Page 10 talks about a coastal front. If Tom moves over Nantucket, the most snow in New Hampshire will be on the sea coast because of that ocean effect snow. I went to a school in Laconia last January, and there was that much snow, Mike, and a dairy uh, banks were like that in here. Girl goes, it's not fair. She wasn't crying, Mike, but I said, I can't move Laconia near the ocean. Okay, okay. We could go to noon. I am all <laughs> All right, you can stay. I'm not moving anywhere. I know we have to end soon, but where the storm's track hinges on the jet stream. And I'm going to leave something on the board. We look at phasing of the polar and the subtropical. Our biggest storms come from the Gulf of Mexico. This jet streams aren't phasing, but phasing means the troughs are sort of, I'm a trough and you're a trough, we're both, okay, you're not ahead of me. Now I'm not phasing with this trough. I'm over here on the southern branch, so the Gulf storm won't go too far out to sea. When a storm comes up near Boston, Mrs. Callahan, a coastal front will form. To the east of the front, the winds will be out of the east southeast. And what does that do? Mike knows it warms the ocean. The ocean cools slower in the winter and spring. I'm sorry, it cools slower in the fall and early winter. To snow, we look at what the temperatures are at 1,000 feet, 3,000 feet, and 5,000 feet. East of the coastal front, that could be what your figures are. This is in Celsius. It's all about freezing. But to the west of the coastal front, Mike talks this to his friend in Hampton, and Mike goes, we're getting sleep blast out. And his friend over in Ringe is getting snow. Or milk, uh, milking. Okay? It depends where the storm tracks. And to answer Mrs. Callahan's question before we talk about Linden State a final time, and we're going to have probably you do the weather if you don't mind. Okay? The coastal front shifts with the low. If the low tracks over Boston, 
Stacy and everyone, then the range snow line moves further towards the lakes regions. So the closer you are to the low, the further west the coastal front's going to be. And that hinges on the jet stream. That's what makes winter forecasting, gentlemen, ladies, difficult. If your teacher was a meteorologist in Nebraska, she don't care about the ocean. They just get feet. That's why people say, well, every year, Rod goes, hey, I'm sick of it. Where's the rain snow line? The ocean plays a big part. Now, at Linden State, they miss all the coastal storms. But this year, the storms track a little further north. So they got more snow than us when we went to rain. Okay, when you go to Linden State, we are gonna miss. We're gonna be laughing down here. Because the storms that go south of the Cape, we're gonna get buried and he's gonna get very little up there. Mike's going, yeah. Mike said, why'd they put a college up there? So oh, you know, <laughs> bring the money in, who knows? You can read all that. Page 11 talks quickly about the jet stream. The bottom one is the omega symbol. When the jet stream does that, Stacy, the weather stops moving west to east. It backs up. The top jet stream sometimes, instead of when the jet rises in the west, it dips in the east. Quickly, if the bell rings, I have one more thing. Something like this. When the jet rises in the west, it dips in the east and vice versa. Okay, uh, quickly. A zonal jet stream, sometimes the jet stream will blow across the whole country west to east. There's no mixing of hot air and cold air. Okay. Page 12 talks about winter storm watches and warnings. You can also add tornado watch and warning. Tornado watch means severe thunderstorms are forming. Mrs. Kelly is less. What causes the jet stream to change? It made patterns. La Nina is Stacy. Jeff is El Nino, you're the masculine. When the ocean is warmer than normal off of Peru, he's the one. When it's cooler, now why is that happening? This is Callahan wants to know. Well, if Mike studies global warming, and you're a research meteorologist, global warming is the burning of oil and coal. And that can cause Stacy and you, the troughs can be a lot. With global warming, it causes extremes in the hydrologic cycle. So if I arm wrestle Tom, he's going to level me. Because you're strong, okay? And you can have stronger high pressures aloft, okay? Why doesn't Mike hold this map up quickly? And I'm going to talk about the balloon. How about three minutes? How much time? Uh, at the most. <laughs> okay. La Nina and El Nino read those. Mike, come on up a minute. Hold them. I'm going to have them hold a weather balloon. You can all feel it before you leave. These are computer models done at the Hydro Meteorological Center in Suitland, Maryland, okay? And tomorrow's, tomorrow at 1 o'clock, 13 students are going to Barbados from London. Jeff's going, can I go? All right. Imagine going from Lindenville to Barbados. How would that feel to you, Mike? No jeans, shorts the whole time. How would you like that? But they're going to do work there. Here's a balloon. Jeff, hold it. Come on up. That's a radius sign. It's launched twice a day. This is the nested grid model. The data goes into the model here. Okay, in Barbados, they're gonna they're gonna go from snow to palm trees. Uh, my weather watcher has number 45 sunscreen because Jeff, you could be like a red tomato there. Okay, uh, 11 degrees from the equator. When we go to schools, we talk about the island of Aruba in Barbados. The sun rotates. The Earth rotates around the sun. You all know this. And because the equator is always in direct alignment with the sun, it's always summer in Barbados. And Jeff goes, that's not fair. Mike doesn't. Mike said, I hate, I want summer here all. There's a lot of things in life that aren't fair. Tom, you will learn that. You already know that. Before you go, this is a computer model. There are 30 equations to the NGM I'm going to write. This balloon is launched at the Weather Service in various parts of the world. There's a receiver on the ground, a transmitter. You're the computer. It goes into him. Using the laws of math and physics, okay, the computer does computations. This is the nested grid, the jet, the surface, the clouds, and the precip. Mrs. Callahan, before they all leave, wants to know why in January did South of Boston, my weather watcher, Jim, we were on a Bridgewater mass, get snow, and the models didn't say it was going to snow that far north. The track was off. You move further north. Because we have a lack of radius on balloon launches over the ocean, okay, 
and over the land, there's not a weather service in, in her home. Where do you live, last town? We don't have these launches in every town, every state. That can throw the accuracy of the storm's track intensity and speed off. That's why these models aren't always accurate. But before I go, we have now, and I'll leave this on the board for you tomorrow, I'm going to leave a few other things, the ADA and the NGN. Sometimes the ADA can go colder at the levels than the NGN. It's a different model. Now quickly, before you go, Ron's saying it's like an apple. What kind is she going to buy for her family? Macintosh, ball, and a delicious. They all look good. Which model do I go with? Amy, this is what they write. This is a discussion by the meteorologist at the Hydrometeorological Prediction Center. Quickly before you leave for this year, uh, when we do the weather at night, there's a blue wall behind me. All we would see is Ron's head. Okay? All we would see is your head. When they came to the station, you two saw the chroma key wall. Mike, uh, come over here quickly. Mike's pant, we filmed from the knee up. So the blue wall, there's a switcher quickly in from his knee up. Okay, so mentally, you have no pants on. <laughs> mentally. If I wear jeans tonight, I'm going to look funny on TV. Okay, because you would disappear. You just see your hands in his head. Because anything blue is removed. One last thing. Again, the sun is getting higher.